Welcome to Win the Day with Wasson, presented by MarketScale in partnership with WTD Consulting. Let's deep dive into the principles and perspectives that have shaped the winning mindsets with our guests focused on driving people performance. Confident our guests can help you unlock the coveted it factor that we believe is a learnable trait enabling the separation for success in a world of human commoditization. I'd like to welcome our Win the Day community to a guest that's not only a friend, but an individual that I truly admire for the journey that he's on, a true innovator in the field of healthcare, one of the rising stars, a 25-year-old, Calvin Smith from Tennessee. Welcome to Win the Day with Wasson. Thanks, Chase. I'm stoked to be here. appreciate you bringing me on. I know you've had an amplitude of, of phenomenal guests, and I'm excited to be a part of it today. Well, we appreciate it, Calvin. And for our community that really doesn't know your backstory, let me level set. And, and part of our episode that we're going to dive deep on is how to leverage something that I think you do better than anyone, social networks, um, you know, LinkedIn, really just building a network to put yourself in a position of success. Let me backtrack three, four years ago. Calvin and I met in Cabo San Lucas, a place that uh, is usually for rest and relaxation. But we talk about enabling the it factor. I could tell within two minutes of talking to Calvin, number one, he had it. Number two, there was a passion to impact and a passion to, to build his brand. So Calvin, for those not familiar with you, I know there's a track record of success on the gridiron that, that I'd love to dive deeper into, but share with our audience your journey and, and really your background up until this point. Yeah, absolutely, Chase, and I appreciate the kind words. Um, so I'd like to start off, uh, I come from East Tennessee, right outside of Knoxville. I'll tell most people Knoxville, Tennessee, just because it resonates to most of the country. So played football and baseball through high school, was in a small town. Uh, we had no Division One athletes that had ever come through the school. So for me, you know, I always kind of had the chip on my shoulder. I always had something on my back. I had to prove myself. You know, we didn't have a powerhouse high school like South Lake, you know, where guys like yourself are coming in every year. Um, for me, it was, you know, I had to go prove it at camp. I had to prove it on film and in the classroom. And those three things really drove me and, and kind of set the foundation for where I am today. Um, so my junior year of high school, I received my first Division One football offer, um, end up with, with 19 total and ended up signing with Coastal Carolina. So, you know, for me, here I am an East Tennessee kid, get an offer from 15 minutes outside the beach, growing company, um, or growing um, football team. And, uh, you know, for me, that the head coach, Joe Moglia, was really a, an it factor. So let's dive into that, Calvin. And, and I appreciate the background. I think for our audience, especially the, the, the stage of life that, that yourself is in, as well as a lot of our Win the Day community, everyone's trying to unlock. How does a guy like Calvin, who's from a smaller community, um, ultimately kind of play with that chip on your shoulder that you've talked about, but end up landing at a university like Coastal Carolina, who at the time really doesn't have the brand that they do now. One thing that you've shared with me and I think is extremely valuable for our audience is not only did you look at Coastal Carolina as an opportunity to, to brand yourself and the program, but you saw a head coach that, that came from a little bit different background and really taught you life lessons. And, and that background is none other than the former CEO of TD Ameritrade. Can you walk through that experience and what led you to Coastal Carolina? Absolutely. And so I'll give a little backstory that I thought was extremely intriguing. And you've went through the recruiting process yourself, so you know this better than anybody. But I'm on, a, I'm on an unofficial visit in the fall. I've already received a scholarship offer. Um, first time sitting down with the CEO um is as he referred to himself not the head football coach the ceo and my dad asked him uh you know coach moglia you know have you had a chance to see calvin's film what do you like about it his response was truthfully i haven't seen calvin's film i couldn't tell you i have my guys and they run the show and if two sign off on it we offer i run it like a business and for me you know i had several other offers and never heard something like that it was also always you know the, the head coach had to do the final sign off so for me, I thought that was intriguing. And I thought, what better opportunity than as a, as a young man wanting to get into business, you know, going to be for a head coach who had obviously proven himself, you know, with one of the largest organizations in the world. 
So that was the that was the ultimate driving factor towards Coastal. Once I got to Coastal, I thought it was super intriguing. Every Thursday, we would cut practice 30 minutes short and do what we called LAF, Life After Football. And we would bring in outside sources talking about business, talking about finances, managing your money. And so he was very driven on life outside of football. And me wanting to get into business sales from an early age, I just thought it was a phenomenal fit. So I love to hear that. And I think your story is is really going to pave the way to hopefully, you know, prospective student athletes right now that NIL is such a big thing. But you touched on something and we'll get into this life after football in your case. Calvin, not only have you excelled on the gridiron and, and life during football, but what I think our audience will really resonate with is that life after football. So let's let's walk through our audience. You're going to these 30 minute, you know, educational seminars weekly. And for those of us that, that have been in the locker room, we know some are probably too dense, some are. But walk me through your mindset when when he started really deep diving into the principles that made him successful off the field. What were some of those learnings you took? Yeah, I think, you know, it comes down to two things. Um, your ability to network and work ethic. Those were the two things that he honed in on. And the work ethic side I'd always had. I, I had in high school, I had, um, you know, through college, that was something I had to bring to the table because I was always um, at a smaller school or too short or, or all those type of things that I was constantly juggling. And so for me, I always had the work ethic chip on my shoulder. But the thing I really took from him was the ability to network and build your brand as you you speak about. And that really you know drove me and has got me to where I am today. Well, that's those are very impactful words. I think brand building is something that all of us can continue to hone in on. One thing I've really admired of how you've continued to build your brand is you've learned how to leverage not only that personal brand, but how to build a personal brand and also leverage that for corporate success, which is something that as we're going to deep dive more into your story, I think is really going to resonate for our audience. So let's backtrack. You graduate from Coastal Carolina. And as I've done some due diligence on your background, you had two more years left to play. And you were also an impact player there at Coastal. So for all those student athletes right now chasing NIL money, which is obviously a good thing and has its has its uh, position in the market, you are chasing something bigger. Help our audience understand how Calvin Smith, a junior at Coastal Carolina, graduated. What vision did you have for yourself as a 20 year old that ultimately left the university early? Yeah, that, that's a that's a great and kind of the golden question I've got asked numerous times. So I appreciate you you bringing that up for me. Um, you know, NFL was always an aspiration. It was something I wanted to do, as I'm sure every kid that steps onto the college gridiron has that goal of. Um, but, you know, there's also a point of realization of, you know, the NFL may not be for me. And for me, you know, I've always been the type to want to get in early and be able to to call it quits whenever that may be when that time comes. And so. For me, my thought process was, Calvin, you've got school paid for, you're healthy, you, you, you've, you've achieved your dream of playing collegiate football, you know, what's next? And I knew sales was for me and, um, you know, diving, diving deep into that and understanding that, you know, even if you, you, can, you can pivot and go a different direction than what your original goal was and still find success. I think they're great points. Um, obviously, you've had that vision, I think. A big thing we talk about on our podcast is visualization leads to realization. Right. Let's jump into that. So you you visualized success in the corporate arena. When I was coming out, Calvin, Twitter was just getting started. We had Facebook. LinkedIn was really not near the platform that it is right now. And I know you've shared a lot with me personally as we forged our relationship. But so you're graduating from college Give our audience some perspective of how you utilized LinkedIn to not only broaden your network, but truly increase the the visibility to yourself and what that process looked like to ultimately land yourself in a position to interview for some big time roles at such an early age. Yeah, absolutely. And and, and I'll be the first to say LinkedIn has got me where I am today. Um, And and you know this as well. And anyone who's had success in, in, in any realm has seen it. LinkedIn is a resource and a navigation tool 
to achieve great things in your career. And for me, you know, here, here's a guy coming out of college. He was a former athlete, which, you know, companies like, of course, but has no job experience, had nothing to offer. And for me, it was, Calvin, you got two choices. You can go do a job that you don't like and, and who knows how long till you get to do what you want to do. Or you can, you know, jump ship, send out as many messages as you can. And it takes one response and your foot's in the door. So uh, about three months prior to graduating, I'm sending out 20, 30 LinkedIn messages. I paid for LinkedIn premium. I probably had $200 in my bank account. And I'm sending out, you know, 20 to 30 LinkedIn messages a day, introducing myself. Hey, I'm a former athlete. You know, here's about me. I don't have any sales experience, but here's what I can bring to the table. Work ethic, commitment, and a desire to succeed. And, and, and as you know, those three things carry volumes over experience and a lot of opportunities and a lot of organizations. So the, I, I fast forward. So I'm sending out, you know, 20 to 30 messages. Comes to find out I get a job for an associate sales rep with Depew Synthes and Trauma. I was going to move to Nashville, three hours from home, felt like a, you know, a foot in the door, I guess, per se. Um, go, go to Nashville, sign a lease, and then I come back home, start packing, and get a text from my pr- our manager at Boston Scientific named Rich Walker. Sends me a text, hey, Calvin, give me a call. Hadn't even spoke to the man, and this is God willing. Um, a recruiter had sent him my resume, and he was intrigued. I had done an internship my last semester of college with an orthopedic company. And he thought that that was super impressive, you know, juggling spring practice, spring workouts, and doing the internship along with taking 16 credit hours. He was extremely impressed with. So landed up, yeah, getting a job with an interventional cardiology with Boston Scientific. And for our audience that's not aware, obviously I've got a lot of history with Boston Scientific from spending many years there in the cardiac rhythm management space. Tremendous respect for the organization, the impact they have on patients. That's the major leagues of sales. So for you to, your first job out of college, land with such a premier company, elite sales training, and it sounds like tremendous mentorship from from this particular manager, walk our audience through, because obviously you've talked through, you know, kind of that chip on your shoulder. You've talked through the mentality that you had as a college athlete. But in the corporate environment, you know, it's not fourth and one where you're having to, uh, you know, see who can bench press the most to get that extra yard. Right. You're walking now into an arena where there are highly educated sales professionals. What's that sales training like, Calvin, for your first job when you're walking into Boston Scientific? Yeah, absolutely. I'll tell you, I'll be the first to say it was a little bit of a shell shock. You know, you're used to being in a locker room where the camaraderie and the organizations just run differently. And so for me, you know, I I step into training week one and I have, you know, I'm around people 20, 25, 30 years older than me. And and I'll never forget day one. I was 21 at the time. We're going around introducing ourselves. I say my name and the guy beside me says, are you able to have drinks later? We're not really sure. It, it, making the joke that I was so young and had got my foot in the door. And I had numerous people come ask me, you know, how did you get in? You know, and, and, and we, I walked through the story that we had spoke about. But for me, the sales training was the biggest kind of wake up call, per se, that Calvin, you're, you've are you been good at a lot of things, but this is a totally new realm that you don't know and you got to know to succeed in, as, as you've seen. So um, recently I've took on the medic training. Um, and, and that's kind of our new, my new sell strategy there. Um, but early on, you know, it was kind of, you know, you're thrown in the deep end and it's, it's survive, swim and see what fits best. Well, I, I think you've touched on a couple of things that I'd like to highlight. Number one, you've had the, you know, the intelligence to, to not only succeed as a competitive athlete and, and, and the audience that's fans of any, any type of sport understands the commitment it takes to succeed as a scholarship student athlete, but parlaying that now into the corporate world, um, essentially going through, you know, a mini med school where you're, 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 you're understanding and you're teaching and you're leading providers on how to implant certain, you know, uh, variable I- implantable devices. I, I think that's something that's kudos to your, your, your acumen, your clinical acumen, but also your kind of mental fortitude to continue to push forward. So let's fast track. You start off as an associate with Boston Scientific. I'm sure you're in cases, you know, day and night, long hours. You're, you're, you're learning not only the language of a healthcare professional, 
you're learning supply chain, you're learning contracts, you're learning strategic management, um, you're learning Salesforce. There's all these things coming at you as a new sales you know, representative of Boston Absolutely. Scientific. What was something that you took from being an athlete that you thought and saw as a very transferable skill set, Calvin, that helped you fast track yourself during that time at Boston? Yeah, I, I think it goes back and, and, you know, maybe this is something that's easily doable. But I think for me, you know, it was it was networking and being able to build my brand in the sense of it made me um, desirable, you know, with other organizations, um, you know, f- fast track back to uh, or, or rewind back to when I was in high school. You know, I was sending out hundreds of emails trying to get a recruiting letter would would do videos and whatever it may be to try and draw interest. It was the same once I got into the corporate world, understanding that LinkedIn wasn't was an avenue for me to build my brand and make me more desirable to other organizations um, really drove the factor of, you know, here's a guy I'm with Boston Scientific for a year and I and in, in nine months, you know, I'm, I'm getting an opportunity to take a step forward in my career with another great organization like Abbott Laboratories. So let's look at this because I'm hearing a theme with you. I'm hearing a theme of being proactive. One yep. theme we haven't touched on that I know is a direct reflection of not only who you are, but what you've you know, represented throughout your career is productivity. And, and it's one thing to leverage a social network or create relationships. It's another to produce both on the field and in this case, off the field. So, you know, I know you had a tremendous amount of success as a representative there at Boston, you've talked about parlaying that success into another opportunity. And for our audience, these are things, Calvin, that, that are great pearls, um, especially when we've got listeners out there looking to, how do I differentiate myself in the market? Obviously there's a production side of things. More importantly, what are you doing in that social setting, in those LinkedIn messages that puts you in a position to be recruited. Walk, walk our audience through what a message or a theme would look like when you reached out to prospective clients. Yeah, absolutely. And, th- and that's a question I-, I probably got 15 times and I would say the last year. Um, you know, Calvin, how do you even find these type of people to even reach out to? Who do I know to reach out to? And, and not to get in the weeds, but, you know, if you want to find something out, you, you can do it. And so for me, you know, going to these organizations and, and being able to filter it out. And I know this is, you know, for people who, who are, you know, further along in their career, this makes total sense. But for a new grad that may not understand, you know, walking them through the process of, you know, finding or, organizations that fit you and that you think you can bring value to and then filtering it out, you know, finding who's hiring, wh- where are those locations at and who's the hiring manager for that. And then you've already got one step closer to being able to have a potential interview or whatever that may be. From there, you know, it, my, my LinkedIn message um, is always personable. I try and find a trait or something that that person's posted that I can relate to. And how can I mend or build a relationship with that person based off a of mutual interest? I was just going to say, I, I saw that in action in full color. And I know we touched on this very briefly, but I'd love your perspective to our audience, Calvin, on how our initial meeting started and really has blossomed into not only a friendship, but a mentor slash mentee relationship, because That's there's true. tremendous things I've taken from you, but, but give our audience, audience some perspective on that. Yeah. So, uh, and I, and I, man, I want to get back there as soon, soon as we can, but um, yeah. So, you know, me and me and Claire, who's my wife, we're in Cabo. Um, we actually booked the trip last minute, probably didn't have enough money to afford to be where we were at. But we're, we're strolling around there enjoying the all-inclusive resort. And, uh, you know, you start talking to people because you don't know anybody beside your spouse. And I love meeting new people. Um, and so I, I run into this doctor, Dr. Rodriguez. Um, and, and we're having dialogue, chatting it up. And I believe you and you and Shay were over there sitting and you overheard and it turned around and, you know, made a comment. And from there, um, and, and I'll give a little rewind. You know, I saw Chase two days before that and we just crossed paths. And I looked at my wife because, you know, the people at that resort didn't, weren't mostly our age. And I said, wonder what that 25 and 26 year old are doing here, you know, because, you know, from y'all looking so young, it was um, we thought that was funny. And so I'm talking with Dr. Rodriguez and um, we're having dialogue. He's, you know, what do you do? You know, I work for Boston Scientific and you had turned around and, you know, made a comment 
Yeah, I was with Boston Scientific back in the day, too, um, in CRM. Obviously, at that time, I wasn't familiar with CRM. But, um, you know, from there, I thought we kicked it off. I think, you know, we went to we get, got, got drinks later that night. And, um, you know, from that initial conversation, it, it's been daily, you know, 430 texts in the morning. You know, let's win the day. And, and, and it's been really me feasting off your energy and being able to, to thrive in an environment that's ever changed. Well, it's, it's been a lifelong relationship I think we'll forge. And, and I think for our audience, and Calvin, you've touched on this, every day is an opportunity to interview. You never yep. know who you'll interact with. You never know what handshake will lead to the next meeting, the next opportunity. I think that's something that early on in your career, you've made a habit. And I think Absolutely. for our audience, understanding those principles and treating each and every interaction as you know, an interview, but also an opportunity to learn, engage. You did say 25, 26. That, that does make me feel pretty good. Um, I think I've got you by 10 or 12 years. But, <laughs> you know, all that being said, uh, you know, the point is well taken, I think, for our audience in that you, you have built a career based off leveraging your ability to network, number one. Number two, you've got that mindset to constantly learn, which is putting you in a position to have a lot of success. I'd like to pivot a little bit, Calvin, because you mentioned cardiac rhythm management. For those that aren't aware, uh, CRM is probably the most clinical and highest level of sales role that there is in medical device. You carry a pager, you're on call 24-7, you forge very deep relationships with electrophysiologists as well as interventional cardiologists, and you're part of the team when it comes to implantation of life-saving uh, devices. So, Calvin, you moved to, to, at the time, I believe it was Abbott. Um, and you, you not only moved, you geographically relocated. So yeah. for our audience, you know, you had some perspectives in multiple regions. Walk us through from a sales perspective what you've learned how that has impacted the way you communicate and what that experience was like as a CRM rep at Abbott. Yeah, absolutely. And, and thank you for that background. Um, so, you know, I think the biggest thing making that switch is, you know, you're going from, and you spoke about it, interventional cardiology, you're dealing with docs that personalities are a little bit different than the CRM realm. I think you would agree with this with your time in CRM. CRM is kind of that 800 pound gorilla in the med device space being so cutthroat and so, um, you know, competitive in, in the landscape of there's, you know, three or four major companies that are grinding for every case. And so for me, you know, early on, you know, I'm still here. I, I take the job with Abbott at 23 years old and I'm competing against 45, 50 year old sales reps. And, and, and the challenge for me is, you know, why is a 60, 55 year old physician going to listen to a 24 year old when they have a guy that's been doing this for 25 years. So that was an obstacle, you know, I had to come overcome from an early get go. And, and I worked with a doc in Louisville, Dr. Rajdeep Gaitonde, and still a close friend of mine today was truly a mentor to me and took me under his wing, but it took three to four months of me winning him over, you know, first one in the, in the hospital, checking his patients at 5 30 AM, stay until 8 PM to do his cases. And I think, you know, showing him that grit, and that desire to succeed in a competitive industry ultimately drew him um, towards me. And, and now we have this lifelong relationship. So you mentioned the word grit. And Calvin, I think that's something that all of our guests that have come on, that, that seems to be a theme when you think about mentality. But I want to slow down and, and think about the word grit for a minute. Because in the word grit is G-R-I-T. Yep. I think what you're alluding to and, and why this particular physician ultimately gravitated to you is you have the it factor, right? It's hard to put your finger on what it is, but when you see it, you know. Yep. You mentioned the work ethic. You mentioned the service. You mentioned the clinical support that you provided. That's a testimony to the things you learn at a young age. I know family is a huge part of the way you were brought up as far Absolutely. as, you know, the, the, the mindset that was instilled in you early on. But those are principles that I think that, you know, you hit the nail on the head with and, and are ultimately why you had so much success there in the CRM space. So let's dive a little deeper. So you're forging this relationship with this particular provider in Louisville. 
For our audience, what does that look like, Calvin? What were the things you were doing to really differentiate yourself versus the competition? Yeah, I think it comes down and, and, and like you said, the if factor really drives it. But, you know, the attention to detail on the little things, you know, it's easy to get comfortable and, and to be great at doing the big things right, because, you know, that's what everybody sees. But it's what are you doing? You know, for example, he had these little green cards that we would fill out. You know, what are thresholds? What are sensing? And I would make sure and this was the littlest of things, but I would put the date, the device and the serial number on the back of every card. Was that necessary? Absolutely not. But did it make his life easier for that one instance of when he needed to know what type of device does this patient have? Absolutely. So for me, I think what really drove him and and, and really drew us together was my attention to detail on the small things, uh, checking patients, helping however I can with his clinic burden. You know, he would have clinic days and I wasn't covering the clinic and I would go up there and just relieve the, the clinic nurse to help her out um, and, and help take care of his patients to the best quality that we could. Well, I hear a lot of service minded leadership that it is obviously a, a, a talent and a it goes back to the work ethic. Big believer that dishwashers work hard, but it sounds like your efficiency, your attention to detail and ultimately the service and, and clinical prowess you provided is what ultimately led, you know, to the separation and, and brought you you and the organization a tremendous amount of business. And most importantly, I think your impact on patient care is something that I also hear a resounding theme on. So let's fast forward, Calvin, 25 years old, you've worked at Boston Scientific, Abbott, two, two Elias and extremely you know well-respected organizations. Absolutely. You're now taking what some would call a risk in your career, but after talking with you and obviously understanding, you know, the wave of of innovation occurring in the AI space, you've now parlayed your success as a medical device sales sales leader into a new organization. Walk us through in our audience what you're doing now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So, yeah, it was definitely a leap of faith. You know, I had great relationships at both previous companies and, um, you know, I had really prayed about it and knew I wanted to continue growing in my career. And I've always had an interest, um, you know, in, in, the startup world. I've invested in stocks, penny stocks, those type of things. And we can talk about that here a little bit later in the podcast. But, you know, for me, uh, as you know, I I firmly believe AI is the future in healthcare. I think it ultimately drives better patient outcomes. Um, And for me, uh, and and this is rewinding, you know, kind of that grinding mentality. I get on Google, you know, six months or probably eight months ago at this point, you know, top AI startups to watch out for in 2022. 2023 and see Cordy on there. And man, what is it? Like AI, super cool, driving better patient outcomes, you know, seems super intriguing. So, you know, go to the website. I'm like, man, this is awesome. As you know, virtual health is taking over the space, telemedicine. Um, and I'm like, I'm going to go on LinkedIn, see if I can figure out who the recruiter is. And so go on LinkedIn, see she had actually posted for an enterprise account executive role, which is my current role. Sh- shot her a LinkedIn message that day. Hey, Kayla, uh, hope you're doing well. I came across Cordy on a list of top AI healthcare companies. I- I've been with two large medical device companies. Would love for us to set up a time to chat to see if further discussion makes sense. Look forward to hearing back. She sends me an invite to, to an um, a interview the next day. From there, we had an interview, went through the interview process. And and one thing I thought was super cool, and I know you know this as well, you know, being in kind of an early-ish startup phase is I had an interview with the CEO. Had never, you know, as you know, when you're with Abbott, when you're with Medtronic, when you're with Boston Scientific, you know, it's tough to get in front of the CEO. But the fact that the CEO took time to sit down and have a 30-minute interview with me meant a lot to me and also told me, I mean, our CEO, you know, was a 35 under 35 MIT award winner. And I'm having the mentality at 25 years old, man, if I can learn from this guy, really pick his brain and understand where what he's done to get him to where he is today, that's going to pay leaps and bounds over a little bit more safety and job security. So I took the risk. I started in January. So I'm about a month in. And I'll tell you, and I've, I've tweeted this as well. I've learned more about business from the realm perspective in my first month in the startup world than I did the first two years, just because you truly see the business from top to bottom versus your your region itself. 
Well, I, I heard a lot of things. The one thing that comes to mind, Calvin, by the inch, it's a cinch. By the yard, it's hard. Yep. And what I've heard a constant theme with you is you, you, you've you always had that kind of brick by brick mentality, meaning right. you're constantly building, you're constantly setting yourself up. And I thought you laid a tremendous example for our audience on, I see a role out there. I, I'm confident in my ability, reaching out to that recruiter, you know, yep. leveraging LinkedIn. And the next thing you know, you're in the room with the CEO Yep. Um, and now fast track, you're part of a what sounds like a very innovative platform serving a lot of patients. So wish you nothing but the best uh, in that role. And, and we'll keep an eye out on Cordy for, for continued waves uh, here in the U.S. Because I know, are you guys based in, overseas or where, where's headquarters just for yeah, background? We're based in, it, we're, yeah, we're based in Copenhagen, uh, Denmark. And uh, we're right at about a, probably 120 employees now. But as you know, the U.S. healthcare market is is obviously you know leaps and bounds in size in, in comparison to the rest of, of Europe. So we're making a huge presence known in the U.S. And I fully expect 2023 to kind of be the year of U.S. Cordy and, and us kind of ramping within within this area um, in regards to sales and growing our team. Well, congratulations to you and the team. And I know they've got a great one in yourself and and a true brand ambassador, uh, not only representing Cordy, but the things you do from a personal standpoint. And that's that's one shift I'd like to touch on, Calvin, because I think it's something you've alluded to throughout the podcast is kind of the personal brand you've created. Um, Let's let's think about things you're doing outside of the normal, you know, corporate I call it nine to five. I think for guys like Absolutely. us, it's it's right. four a.m. to twelve, you know, a.m. We never turn yeah. it off. But right. walk us through and, and and kind of our audience, Calvin, on on what makes Calvin tick outside of business. Yeah, absolutely. So as you know, this um, my health is my is my one of my number one priorities outside of you know my family, my relationship with God and work. You know, I think being fit, being healthy is ultimately the driver in those other areas as well and can ultimately domino effect. Um, so, so love, you know, being outside, being, you know, doing those type of things. Um, and, and in regards to, you know, what, what makes me tick, I think the biggest thing is is I came from a family that, was ve- that I was very fortunate, but we were by no means upper echelon, higher class, those type of things. And so for me, I, I, I had everything I could ever want, but it's always – what can I do more for my kids? And I'm fortunate to have a son now. He's one. His name is Briggs. And, you know, when I envision something, I envision him. And how can I make life better on him and my grandchildren down the road? And so th- that's my it factor. And when what makes me tick is how can I build, you know, not only generational wealth, but how can I leave a name of, you know, Calvin did everything he could for his family and for others around him and try to make the world a better place. Well, I, I think that's something that's obviously going to land with, with our audience because the majority of our win the day community is, is always looking for pearls and, and different things to to think differently, to respond Absolutely. differently. And, and the way you're wired is going to translate very well into even more success. So we mentioned health and I know, you know, I'm a big believer in this as well. Absolutely. I'm a big believer in routine as I know you are. Yep. Walk us through your routine, Calvin, because I know as You've been in the medical device sector. We talked about being on call, being in the procedural room, which is what you are accustomed to. Your routine has now changed now that you're part of Cordy. Call yep. points have changed, et cetera. Absolutely. How do you maintain a routine you know, outside of business that keeps that mind fresh for business? That's a good question that um, you know, has been you know, kind of a little bit getting used to. Um, you know, at, at, when you're in the medical device realm, your schedule is pretty consistent in the same of I'm going to be at the hospital at this time. And this is what changed. You know, I've went to a virtual setting now where I'm fully selling remote. We have occasional interaction face to face, but a lot of it's virtual. And so for me, you know, it's a 430 a.m. wake up call, um, roll out of bed. Wife still snoozing away. Um, a lot of days, you know, it's Calvin. I don't really feel like getting up, but, you know, I've set this standard and that's what I'm going to live by. And so you know, hit breakfast, we'll hit the gym, we'll be in the gym by 5, 5.15. And it's it's go time from there. I'll get about an hour workout in, come back, shower, eat breakfast with my son. And then I'm go time by 8 a.m. And I'm, you know, cold calling, reaching out to these organizations, these medical con- contact centers. And we're diving deep into how can we grow the business. Um, you know, from there, obviously, I have some free time. I'll have lunch with my son. 
um, and do some personal things along those lines. But, you know, I'm full go from probably till about five, six o'clock. And then from there, like you said, it's still go time. You know, I'm thinking about the real estate market, the stock market, the sports betting market, and how can I create passive income, create side hustles within those three branches that ultimately, you know, can take over, you know, the corporate job, you know, in, in the long term. The process always pays. And that's what I'm hearing a constant theme with you, Calvin. So you mentioned some of the ancillary ventures and, and streams of income. But before we get into that, I, I do want to deep dive a little bit on this world of virtual selling that you're in, especially for our younger audience who's looking to put themselves in a position like yourself. What are some some tips or things you've learned in this new virtual world to truly, number one, captivate, but number two, prolong conversations so that gives your organization a chance to, to ultimately close? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, and this comes back to the medic training that that I'm currently using and, and you'll resonate with this. And, and there's one simple word, pain. What, where within the organization are they having pain that our organization can bring value and ultimately drive better patient outcomes or drive better results if you're not in the healthcare realm? And, and understanding that early on can ultimately be the driving factor through any conversation you're having top to bottom, understanding the pain, where can I bring value and create better outcomes for that organization? No, I think those are, are very valid points. And, and pain is something that, that probably not a lot of folks think about when they're selling. Absolutely. What I'm hearing and what I've seen, you know, as the years have progressed and, and been in, in the, the various situations of conversation, it's a very consultative approach. Yep. Um, and it sounds like from, from what you've continued to talk through, you're constantly looking for, number one, that connectivity point, but number two, solving for a solution for the customer. Yep. So I appreciate you sharing that with our audience. Is there anything, Calvin, when you, let's dive way back, back to coming out of Coastal. Yep. Is there any advice you would give potential student athletes or just students in general, knowing what you know now that would position yourself even better during the interview process, during engaging, looking for jobs that you, you, you've experienced during this tenure of four or five years as a corporate ambassador? Yeah, absolutely. And this is one thing I think moving forward and, and being able to teach my son at an early age, and it, and it comes back to networking. You know, I played the networking card so late. Um, you know, I was I really started networking about four months before graduation, but understanding and, and you see this, you know, you kind of get in your comfort comfort zone of you. You come from a small town. You, you kind of compare yourself and, and where do I lay? Um, but you get, in the you know, the real world and there's some big dogs out there. And, and I've seen that, you know, as I have came to the you know, this world and seeing some VC guys that are my age that did internships that I never even considered through college. And, and I think that really goes to show how can I create value for myself early on in my career, not only once I graduate, but through college and being able to build relationships, even if you're three to four years out from graduation, ultimately, I think is the driving factor. No, I appreciate that. And I think it's noted and something our audience can really tune in on. And I would encourage everyone in the win the day community to really start to open and look outside of your comfort zone, connect with, with thought leaders and titles that you don't think necessarily will, will resonate with yourself. But ultimately, you'll be in the same position as, as Calvin with a, a fast track in your career. So thank you, Calvin. One thing that I think is, is pretty interesting and I've kept an eye on and I'm not near as, as brave as, as yourself and others that have dived into the world of, of sports betting or, or, or different streams of, of income um, in, in regards to that, but I know you've had a tremendous amount of success in that world. Walk our audience through your perspective on finding ancillary revenue streams outside of your 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 W two. Yeah, absolutely. So, and me and you have talked about this, um, and I know you have you know another property as well. You know, real estate is a huge avenue, and obviously that you know timing's huge in real estate itself in regards to what you know, rates and those type of things. But for me, you know, I've always had an interest in, in how can I create a, an income for myself that I don't have to answer to anybody for. And, you know, there's so many avenues out there. And I'll tell, you know, a fun fact story from back right when I graduated, had $500 in the bank account. And here I am signing a 
$7,500 sign on check for uh, my first company. And, you know, I've never seen that type of money before. And I'm like, I'm just going to put it in the stock market. And I throw it in the stock market and actually get really fortunate and find, find a, find a uh, startup penny stock that ends up running uh, about 4,000% on my $7,500. And, you know, here I am. And, and, and I think that early on showed me, Calvin, there's a lot of money to be out. Be, there's a lot of money out there to be made. That, it, that doesn't come from the nine to five. And, and that's ultimately where the differentiating factor is. And I'm sure you would resonate with that as well, is that that income outside of the nine to five can create leaps and bounds of, of opportunities for retiring early, you know, passing down generational wealth and those type of things. Well, I, th- I think for our audience and, and by no means are we uh, connoisseurs or, 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 or extreme, you know, um, experts in, right. you know, yeah. Betting or stock, et cetera. I mean, you pay people much smarter than me to do that. But I think it goes back to, Calvin, you know, your risk tolerance in betting on yourself to be a learner and also, you know, just just being a forward thinker. And I appreciate you sharing that perspective, especially for the target audience that I really feel is going to resonate and be impacted by not only your journey, but your thought process, way of thinking, and really just overall approach to life. So, can't right. thank you enough for sharing that. In regards to our audience, Calvin, is there anything else that you think will land well um, in regards to thought process, things you enjoy doing, or just different ways of, of thinking that will ultimately you want to land on? Yeah, I think, you know, as I wrap this up and, and specifically towards, you know, those new graduates that are looking, and, and I can speak more on behalf on the healthcare, healthcare realm, but understanding seeing down the line, you know, where is health, you know, having that, like you said, that fortitude of the bigger picture of what's to come and having that early on, especially early in your career can set you up for major success. You know, I know we're both in the AI space and I think we're still early, um, but understanding those type of, of platforms, the that healthcare is trending, virtual telemedicine, AI, those type of things are, are we're seeing a shift in healthcare and so for me, you know, advice that I'm giving a 21 year old, 22 year old that's graduating is find those things early and find companies al- that align with those type of trends and see and, and try and find your way in with that, whether that be through LinkedIn, the website, whatever those things may be, those ultimately will, will set you up for major success down the line. So, Calvin, for our audience, you, you've, you've talked about being a constant learner. Um, a, a, you're always gravitating towards trends and, and different innovating topics. What are some things that you're reading in your downtime to keep yourself sharp? Yeah, so I actually found a book called The Spin Cell Cycle. And, and the guy really dives deep into understanding the sales process and figuring out who within the sales process is the ultimate driving factor of the decision maker. You know, you have multiple people within the sales process. You have who I like to call, and this refers back to the medic training. You have who you would consider your champion. The champion is the one driving you selling on your behalf within the organization. And then you have your economic buyer, who's the ultimate decision maker. You know, making sure you have those type of people aligned and, and understanding that can ultimately help tr- help you close deals and understand your process and your your deal better than anybody. Uh, that's that's a great tidbit. Uh, very familiar with the book as well. I think it aligns to things we've talked about on consultative selling and really ensuring that every person engaged in the buying process understands your story, understands yep. the organization's vision. And most yep. importantly, there's a win win for both parties when you're Absolutely. entering into whatever agreement uh, that you're representing. So Absolutely. thank you for sharing that, Calvin. Last but not least, as we close. Calvin, you know our mantra. We rise, we grind, we shine, we impact. We win the day. At the end of the day, how does Calvin Smith win the day to our audience as far as what he wants to leave as the resounding theme to who you are? Yeah, I I appreciate that question, Chase. I think the biggest thing for me and and what I want the audience to know is Calvin Smith, and and I hope you take this from me, is someone who has had the chip on his shoulder your whole life. And if this was you, I hope you resonate and and has overcome obstacles through the recruiting process, 
through graduating early and fi- wanting to get into med device and overcoming those challenges, and now in an enterprise role at 25 years old with one of the most innovative startup companies in the AI space in, in, in general. So uh, my thing is there's no goal too big and push, strive, and, and desire for more. Well, I appreciate the perspective, Calvin. I know for those that aren't familiar with your story, there's been a few themes that have obviously landed. Number one, mentality, grit you spoke about, passion you spoke about, competitive mindset you spoke about. These are things that are obviously learnable traits. I think through competition, you've developed this mindset where you've overcome adversity. Absolutely. And for our audience, these are things that we constantly are looking to sharpen our sword on. And I can't thank you enough, number one, for how you carry yourself. But number two, the example you've set for our Win the Day community. One thing we like to close on, Calvin, and it's a big theme of our show. We rise, we grind, we shine, we impact. Absolutely. We appreciate you joining. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate your time and your belief in me to, you know, hop on and and chat with young minded individuals who are looking to make the jump, you know, into the healthcare realm. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Calvin. I know you will continue to win the day. We look forward to our next episode and thank you for joining Win the Day with Wasson.